Hello viewers, Super GT here. About a year ago on Gran Turismo Sport, we had an event where we had to beat some Formula One drivers who set some times. It was Max Verstappen, it was Alex Albon. Now we sent their Gran Turismo careers into the Shadow Realm, but Red Bull are back with another F1 driver to beat. Let's have a look. Here it is, Red Bull beat the pro. This time it is Yuki Tsunoda, as you can see there, with the cursor pointing up his nose. Fantastic. So this time trial has actually been here for like two weeks and Yuki's obviously been too busy, but finally he set a time. So we're gonna try and beat it. And obviously that means we get an F1 seat, right? Okay, let's take a look at the details, shall we, of this event. Suzuka, Honda NSX Route 3. Please note that there are no prizes offered for winning. Oh, well, that's, that's me out then. You know, I, I can't be doing this. Just kidding, this could be a good video. Okay, we can have a look at his, uh, at his lap here. Hi, I'm Yuki Tsunoda. This is my hot lap of Suzuka for Red Bull Beats Pro. So he didn't, he wasn't happy with that lap. He wasn't not happy at all. So lots of swearing, just like when he's actually driving the F1 car. All right, enough jibber jabber, let's jump in. So hard tires, now it's a two minute 0. 0.6. I reckon I could beat this. I reckon I could beat this, let's go. Well, I seem fairly confident, so let's jump in and try our best to beat this lap time. Honda NSX Group 3 car around the famous Suzuka circuit and the lap time to beat, two minutes, 0. 0.6 or 627. So let's try and do it. Now, the first thing I realized about this car, it's not a car I've driven a huge amount. I've driven Suzuka a fair amount, but not this car. And actually it's a very slidey car and you realize that when you head into t towards turn one and two. But the main thing we're gonna realize here is just how strict the track limits are on this event. Wow, okay, so you can't, we can barely go off. We got a invalidated lap there. So track limits is gonna be an issue. So this is something that often happens on these types of events. They make the track limits a lot stricter than they normally are in the game. So often you can actually run four wheels off or two on the curb, two on the grass. But on this event, that is not the case. So we do have to kind of adjust our line from what we typically go for. So we make it through turn one and two just fine. Now we're trying to really just set a benchmark lap, which I think is always a good idea in a time trial. And uh, we get a WhatsApp notification there, so don't go checking your phone because that was actually just part of the recording. So through Dunlop Corner, coming through here, up the hill, through the crest, and then into Degna one and two, very fast, sweeping right-handers where the first one is. Second one a little bit slower. This week, I'm up to the second split, a little bit wide. Now, Yuki did a 52.8, I think it was, up until that split, and we are a little bit down. Maybe by about four tenths, five tenths, uh, by that point, through the hairpin, a little bit wider than we would have liked. But it is our first lap, so we, uh, we're not going to expect perfection immediately. So then you wind round towards Spoon, famous double apex corner. Look for that tarmac on the right. That's my GT3 or Group 3 reference anyway. Tends to work a little bit too wide there. And um, on the exit, not too bad, fairly tidy. Then you've got a fairly long straight up and uh, towards 130R. And you're probably wondering how I'm speaking without my mouth opening. Absolutely incredible ventriloquism by Super GT here. Into the uh, final chicane. Perhaps a little bit late on the brakes, overshot the first apex and really messing up the second apex. But coming up to the line, let's see what this lap time is. Two minutes, 0.6 to beat. Okay, first lap there, one tenth away. One tenth. 
it wasn't even that good of a lap. It wasn't even that good of a lap, and we've almost done it already. Let's get serious now. The jumper's coming off. So with the jumper, it was actually a hoodie, with the hoodie now off and my microphone fixed after I knocked it to pieces, let's jump back in and try to end Yugi Tsunoda's Gran Turismo career. Now, to be fair to him, I'm guessing he doesn't really play this game. And Gran Turismo, he's one of those, it's a weird racing game. The things you have to do to make yourself go quick aren't exactly mimicking reality. So, you know, they call it the real driving simulator. That really is just marketing, I would say. Because, of course, there is some element of realism, but it's not a 100% reflection on reality. But then again, no game or sim actually is. But there you go. It's kind of like the Lewis Hamilton DLC, where in many ways he was missing the track limits, but that just shows he's, you know, he doesn't play the game, so he doesn't quite know how much you can abuse track limits at times. So at this point here, coming into the hairpin, we are half a second up on our previous lap. A little bit too wide on the exit there. That's going to cost us because you've got a long straight here. Which isn't straight at all, but you know what I mean. It's flat out. Coming up towards Spoon. Four tenths in hand here compared to the two minutes point seven. And I know that there's time in that as well. We could still improve even further. Second apex of Spoon. Good exit all the way out to the full extent of the kerb. And now we are about six tenths up. So it's really just a case of don't bottle it. It's very easy to bottle it. 130R, fearsome corner. Got to really commit to it. Don't drag too wide on the exit. That's fine. Move over to the left. Breaking about 150 metres before the corner. Which actually... Actually, we, we turn in just fine. Let's see what this lap time is going to be. We get a really good chicane. We're more than a second up. And eventually, it's going to be a 159.6. Well, and there we go, guys. Fantastic video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. And there we have it, ladies and gents. Um, disappointing end to his Gran Turismo career. Hi there, is that Christian Horner? Hi, mate. Yeah, long time, no speak. Um, yeah, get me in for the seat next year. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Okay, well, what have we done here? 652 in the world. We can definitely go better than that. We can definitely go better than that. We're 2.2 seconds away from the number one. We need to get that a lot closer. So that was our next task. We've beaten Yuki. All good. Let's just try and improve our time. It didn't last very long because we actually got the track limits warning on the very first corner. So we make it through turn one just fine. Okay, great. But that was... Um, that was fine until we got to this point here. I felt like I was on a good lap, judging by the split timers through sector one, two, and three. But there we go. We just get invalidated. Very frustrating. We've all been there, haven't we, ladies and gents? You rage into the barrier. So that was a very frustrating lap, having, having got all the way around it pretty much, apart from th uh, three corners and then boom you get a, uh, a penalty. Very frustrating. But I knew that there was time available to be gained here. Uh, 59.6. Good lap, but I know I can go maybe into a 58. I think that would be a suitable lap time for me. So that is our main aim. And really just to try and improve our rank in the world. Now for me, time trialling is often a very frustrating experience, which is why I don't often go for time trials but I must say that there is a really big benefit to time trialing which is really just really just get a very good understanding of the limits of the car of the circuit when to change gear which gear to use when to brake exactly how strong to brake all these little all these little things you really do hone down and you know in any sort of motorsport you just need to get these fine details down to a T and even if you do have have it down to a T, you can still get even more precise with it. So there's always improvement to be found. So on the exit of Spoon, again, I feel like I'm on a good lap. Coming up towards 130R, our fearsome corner. We don't go too wide, we don't cut the inside either. So all good, into the final chicane. 
and actually we clipped the apex quite nicely there much smoother through the exit let's see what this time is going to be it felt good let's see if it actually is good it's a 59-0 okay that was a solid improvement I know I can go quicker but that was a solid improvement as I just said 321st okay um, now the best way to improve on these I think is to watch the top times so let's watch the top times so Williams B racer very fast Italian driver he knows what he's doing obviously because he's number one so let's see what he does if there's anything different I could be learning here so staying in fifth gear rather than going up to sixth now this car was very slidey Every time you downshift, it wants to, the, the rear end wants to slide around. It's a very drifty kind of car. So you have to keep that under control. But what you'll notice is that he's actually using that to his benefit. He's kind of sliding the car a tiny bit just to get it to go around the corner. So he's very comfortable with that. So Degna 1 right on the edge of track limits again just just knows exactly where to position the car 51 8 that's about eight tenths quicker than i was going to that split first gear a lot closer to the apex than i was getting tidy exit and it's revving the car a little bit there you see on the on the rev counter actually revving it quite a bit revving it quite hard keep it to the right Breaking on that tarmac, bit of a bit of a slide. Keep it in third. Yeah, a bit of coasting to get the car to rotate mid-turn, and then power out on the exit. Let's see if he goes up into sixth gear before 130R. Which I think he should do. I don't know. No. Okay. Keeps it in fifth. That's quite interesting. Left wheels well over onto the grass. Gets that rotation there really nicely. It's, just, it's such a smooth, fluid lap. Keep it to the right. This is something Yuki didn't do. <laughs> you can see how, just how far to the right he's keeping that. Um, Yuki stayed to the left. You actually gain like a tenth for free just by keeping to the right on the run up to the line. Just wanted to have a look at that line through 130R again. Yeah, I think as long as you keep, as long as you keep your tyres just about on the tarmac your right hand tires your lefts can be on the grass it's kind of the weird way it works let's try and chip away that time a little bit more would have been nice if yuki could have put maybe more time in. we don't know how much time he put into that lap he wasn't happy with it i'm not happy all right so with our newfound knowledge would we be able to improve our time well on this evidence no this parts of the video is about the frustration of time trialing because I kept making this same glaring error over and over and over again and I don't know why but I just somehow completely forgot how to drive and it wasn't just three times in a row it was actually four times in a row as you can see why can't I do this bloody corner I'm not happy so yeah very frustrating times indeed very very frustrating and here again getting the the track limit warning before we've even started the the lap eventually we got our act together and managed to get through turn one and two without sliding off into barrier R, setting a 59.3 a 59.2 the following lap and by this point here on this third lap of this little sequence you can see I'm more than three tenths up uh, three times up on a 0.288 so this could be a 58 if I continue this advantage to the line and then coming through here uh, well no it's going to be an invalidated lap once again very frustrating drinking game for the word frustrating we just set some fairly consistent laps there so four laps within two tenths but it wasn't good enough because it was still slower than where I ideally wanted to be 
did it again through 130R. Crashed myself into the barrier again through the chicane. And uh, did this again. Revisited my old mistake. So yeah, by this point, I just really began to question my entire existence. Why do I keep doing that? Why am I such an idiot? Well, it wasn't about to get much better because I found myself a new track limit penalty that I didn't really know about before. And just on the exit of Degna 2, there you go. That's track limits, really? I need to open this window. I'm getting bacon hot in here. All right, let's freaking do this. Let's get this 158. I think you get the idea. I, I completely forgot how to drive, but I think this uh, video really encapsulates the true highs and lows of motorsport, of motor racing, of time trialing, of Gran Turismo, the highs of beating Yuki Tsunoda, and then the lows of just not knowing what I'm doing and driving as if I've got one IQ and one brain cell. Now, by this point, I had developed a second brain cell and miraculously learned how to drive again. 33.3 for the first split. Happy with that. Happy with that. We need to get to the second split when it's on about... What was it 58.6 no 52.6 and that'll be okay let's see what it's going to be it's going to be a 52.6 there it is so we know that we're on for a decent lap here because every time you restart the session you don't have the delta timer at the bottom so you kind of just have to remember what your split sectors are and just roughly how if you feel like it's a good lap or not into spoon through here Powering up to the outside, keep it nice and tidy on the second apex. Maybe on the power a little bit too late, car just not quite revving out and we don't go all the way to the full extent of the kerb. Just having a quick glance back at the ghost though, and we're definitely a few tenths ahead of it. So this is good news. Can we finally get through these last couple of corners without bottling it? 130R, my absolute nemesis. We play it nice and safe and we don't get the invalidated lap into the final chicane. Can we do it a little bit wider than I would have liked. We're going to take a look back at the ghost. It catches up for, for sure. Very close indeed. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be a 58.9. There it is. Right, that's it. 58.9. Messed up the chicane, but I'm happy with it. This puts us just behind Kelvin 1989. The well-known goat. I think I can go quicker. But it's gone midnight. I've beaten Yuki, which is all I was here for. And we've got the F1 drive for next year secured. So what more do you want, really? I think we've done all we needed to do. So if you did enjoy this video, get yourself subscribed. On the other hand, I can't tell you what to do. As long as you're watching, which you obviously are right now, then all is good. All is good, you know. But that's the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Watch out for me in F1 next year and um, I'll catch you in the next video. Stay safe out there everyone and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.